Toronto Public Health is developing a wastewater surveillance program to look at detecting any potential spread of diseases during the FIFA World Cup. A pilot will be collecting sewage samples in areas where fans congregate and test them for infections like COVID, influenza, RSV and the like. But TPH also says it's looking into whether other illnesses like measles could be monitored with wastewater, especially given the number of people expected to come to town next year and uh, all the different areas potentially they could come and bring diseases from. There's about 300,000 out-of-town visitors coming to Toronto for the six World Cup matches next year, starting in June. So for more on this, we're joined live by Dr. Fahad Razak. He's an internal medicine specialist at St. Michael's Hospital. And uh, Dr. Razak, the first thing, uh, I'm always curious about this, because we use wastewater during the pandemic, and we still do. But uh, it's very curious to see a, a, a city public health body looking at doing something like this. What do you think the possibilities are here? Yeah, look, this was a really innovative technology. A lot of it developed here in Canada that became very relevant for us, but also across many parts of the world uh, during the pandemic. And what's really exciting here is that you can see the potential to extend it out. So as you said, things like influenza, measles, importantly, but even things like a contaminant into the opioid supply that's causing overdoses. So this technology, I don't think we have a full sense of all of the promising ways it can be used. And this application in a mass human gathering, a sporting event like, like the FIFA World Championship, it could be the Olympics, hundreds of thousands, millions of people sometimes aggregate. They can bring diseases from different parts of the world. And there's the conditions for rapid spread. People are packed together. They're in restaurants. They're in bars. They're in washrooms. All of the disease can spread in these areas. So the idea that you could use wastewater to pick up that signal uh, is very, very innovative. In terms of uh, the, the delay, as it were, between something uh, appearing in wastewater versus when, uh, say, a disease is, is contracted, how quick are you able to pick up on... Um, I, and I also realize as I ask this question, there's going to be different answers depending on the disease and uh, what, you know, the, the virus could be that causes it. But is there is there a, a decent um, lack of delay or lag between the actual potential outbreak and when you can see it? Yeah, that's the right question. So the idea here is, is it just seeing if something's occurring, but you can't intervene, or does it give you enough of a lag? And the answer, encouragingly, is it does warn you very early in, in the course of illness. So, for example, if it was COVID, and again, I don't think COVID is the main threat we need to think about now, but we were able to detect the signal with enough time to intervene. The same for measles, the same for things like RSV. And so it is a very important technology. Let's use measles as an example. Canada is on the cusp of losing its elimination status for measles, which it's had for three decades. We've just gone through the worst outbreak in a generation. There's clear evidence that you can use wastewater to detect even isolated, very low concentration cases of measles occurring. And with a large unvaccinated population, that can allow you to respond. So that's the important part, the important part here. This is actionable insights. Well, uh, Dr. Razak, just, th just thinking about something like measles, and you mentioned the fact that, you know, we've had one of our worst seasons for measles quite literally since I was born. And we also are seeing, uh, you know, a rise in cases. But also the way that this seems to work is it, it's, uh, it's, it proliferates around the world. It's not necessarily something that's happening in our backyard, but then it, it will proliferate in our backyard after it comes in. So for something like measles... Uh, can this be a, something that is used outside of something like the World Cup where you have a mass gathering? Can you use it from an epidemiological standpoint to trace beyond just having the... Like, I'm trying to think more, so is it just going to be at the source and that's really the only thing you can do with it? Or are you able to sort of extrapolate further? You can extrapolate further. Again, good question. And that is currently some of the ways it's being used. So, for example, in the Windsor region in Ontario... They've used wastewater detection of measles to detect a signal saying, OK, there's newly emerging signal of measles right within our community. Let's use that as an opportunity to reach out to parents again and say, look, do you have a newborn who's now eligible? Bring them in, get them vaccinated. Do you have someone that you've been worried about not vaccinated so far? You're really considering it. Well, now may be the time to go ahead and do it. So, again, this is very actionable information. This this event, I think we should see this as an innovation case for how it can be used. But the technology itself has such broad implications. And like I said, don't just think about infectious illness. It's clear, for example, that it can detect 
fentanyl, which is which is responsible for upwards of 80 percent of the overdoses that kill people for opioids. So it's very important. This technology is a way of surveilling, allowing us to, to act and intervene, but also not requiring any individual to go and get tested. And that's important. It's a passive technology. A lot of applications here, and I guess like fertilizer, sometimes you just have to think it may be disgusting, but a lot of good things can come from it. Exactly. Dr. That's Fahad, exactly right. Yeah, well, I, I, I appreciate giving people that mental image at home. Dr. Fahad Razak, I, I appreciate your time, and uh, I really appreciate getting to talk science with you. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Ken.